Welcome back to This is Van Color. My name is Mo Amir. Our featured guest tonight is one of my favorite journalists here in Vancouver. You've seen her work in the Toronto Star, Vancouver Sun, Business in Vancouver, and CTV News Vancouver. She covers housing and city issues for the independent online news outlet, The Taiyi. A Facebook friend of Mo Senior, she is Jen St. Dennis. Jen... Thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So it's been four years since the BC NDP introduced the speculation and vacancy tax. And yet we've seen housing prices hit record highs. Rent prices are still very high and vacancy rates are low. So did the spec tax even work? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. It kind of depends on what you mean by work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the BC NDP did introduce the speculation and vacancy tax um, back in 2017. It was kind of amongst this big uh, collection of taxes that were supposed to calm down the housing market. So there was a forum buyer's tax. There was this thing called the school tax that kind of applied to properties worth over $3 million and this speculation and vacancy tax. Mm -hmm. So you're right that, you know, right now after during the pandemic we saw this huge another real estate price spike it kind of happened again after it happened in 2016 right. um, but in between that period we did actually see real estate prices calm down quite a bit um, we saw real especially in the high end um, we saw the prices fall we saw the rental market kind of ease up a little bit on that really tight vacancy rate and we actually saw rents you know rents never went down but they stopped increasing in that really rapid amount that we were seeing before but then the pandemic it came and it kind of erased all those gains. So a couple of economists recently looked at the speculation and vacancy tax and mm -hmm. they found some really interesting things. They did find that, that it did have an effect on that sort of calming of the market that we were seeing before 2020, before the pandemic. Um, they also found that it pushed a lot of units into the rental market. They, they found it pushed um, 20,000 condo apartments into the rental market, which is actually really significant. Mm -hmm. How many people are actually paying the spec tax. Oh, I actually didn't look up that number. I have to get that for you. But it's, you know, it's a relatively small amount. I think it's around eight. It was around 8,000 properties the first year it came mm -hmm. in. And now it's dropped to around 6,000 properties. So it has dropped over time. And actually, that's one of the reasons the economists who reviewed how they, the spec tax is working, they actually said it's it's working and should be kept in place. And that was one of the reasons why. Because I guess it's not meant as a revenue generator. It's meant as a disincentive to keep homes yeah. vacant. Yeah, that's right? right. It's meant as a signal to property owners that we don't want you keeping your properties vacant. Right. We want you to either rent them out or live in them full time, like become a principal resident of BC or some, you know, some people have sold their properties in reaction to this tax. And that's why the number has gone down. So with rents as high as they are throughout Metro Vancouver, particularly, why would anyone keep a piece of property empty. Yeah, I mean, we heard a, a bunch of different things when, um, well, this is a little bit of a different tax, but Vancouver's empty homes tax also came in. Like we have this separate empty homes tax in Vancouver. And so we heard a lot of things from people coming to public hearings at the time, things about how, you know, they only live in Vancouver for six months of the year. And for the rest of the time, they live maybe in the, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard people, li I live in the Sunshine Coast and I keep a, an empty apartment here just to live in on the weekends. Maybe when I come in to the city to see friends or go to a doctor's appointment or something like that. So, um, and some people were saying, you know, um, I know I have friends or family who keep their investment condos empty because they perceive that having a renter would damage it and lessen the value. So it is purely an investment. So those are some of the reasons that people were keeping them empty. Somehow I feel like those people will not generate a lot of sympathy when they come up with these reasons for why they keep their homes empty. Yeah. And I mean, we've heard a lot recently from a BC Liberal leader, Kevin Falcon, a lot of like that he doesn't like the speculation tax. Um, he talks about how this really hurts like people who have a family cottage. Um, and the, the speculation tax doesn't apply to every single place in BC. It's where there was the most intense housing pressures. Right. High demand areas. So when he talks about that, when he talks about people who own family cottages, I do have to think about just the wide swath of people in, you know, Metro Vancouver, like Victoria, the Kelowna area, those kind of hotspots that are just struggling really hard with housing affordability. Yeah. And yeah, you kind of have to think like putting those concerns beside, you know, the person who is maybe struggling with their their family cottage or second home. It does kind of make you wonder, you know, how is that going to play for most British Columbians? So aside from perhaps the perception that your val the value of your second home will lose uh, equity or, or, or market value or having a cottage, 
Are there any real critiques about the spec tax? Is it really affecting people in a negative way? Yeah, I mean, I... Like I say, I think for most people, it's not going to affect them. And I think that's maybe why you see, you know, in, in public opinion polling, we generally see pretty high public approval of these kind of demand side taxes. And I, my guess is that's, is that's why. That is just for the ordinary person, they're not having to pay this tax. Um, and so it doesn't, you know, doesn't actually affect them. Do you think this is the most popular tax in BC history because that's how I've called <laughs> how I describe it and I can't think of another tax that people are really clamoring for keeping and maybe even strengthening. That's a really good point. Yeah, the most people usually are not cheering for taxes. <laughs> um, mostly, you know, they're sort of like seen as a bitter bit of vegetable that they have to swallow, like the gas tax, for instance. Right. Um, you know, people don't like paying taxes like that. This one, you know, because it was kind of seen as this tax on a luxury item, a mm -hmm. second home. I mean, if you have, if you own two homes in the Metro Vancouver area, or, you know, if you own like a home in the Sunshine Coast and one in the city, you know, you're doing, you're pretty well off you're doing pretty well right. and I think it gets into this whole concept of tax fairness and you know what who are we who are we taxing and maybe that explain some of the popularity. Right. Now, one of the things that really frustrates me in the housing dialogue, particularly online, is that people look at, you know, demand side measures and supply side measures, building more supply or again, taxing certain types of demand as a dichotomous spectrum. And you're either one side or the other side. And I'm kind of scratching my head when I see these arguments because I go, why can't we do a combination of all of this? Yeah, I find this frustrating as well. What you tend to see is people on the demand side, um, you know, calling for more taxes, calling for more studies of, you know, sort of speculative behavior, maybe like how big is the foreign buyer problem? You maybe would have heard that back in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, today, just like kind of a focus on investment activity and a, and a real suspicion from that side of new development and questioning, like, where is this new development going to, going to go? Is it just going to go into like investors keeping the, the homes empty? Right. Then from the supply side, you kind of tend to see this real dismissal of those demand side um, concerns. So things like you might see a dismissal of, oh, was money laundering really that big of a deal? Were foreign buyers really that big of a deal in mm -hmm. 2016? And so I think you kind of get both sides dismissing these things that are actually seem like quite important parts of the housing discussion. You know, we do need more supply. We do need more rental being built. Um, and, you know, foreign buyers were a big impact in 2016, maybe not so much in 2020 when the sure. real estate spiked again. But um, that speculative activity was something. And we kind of see that with the speculation and vacancy tax that, you know, it was it was, did seem to be a needed signal to property owners that, listen, there is actually a cost to society when you keep your property empty. It just frustrates me when the demand side advocates go, see, we're building record amounts of homes and housing prices are still up. And and then the supply side advocates go, look, you have your foreign buyers tax and your spec tax and we have record housing prices like that. <laughs> yeah. kind of entrenched in this <laughs> argument that no one will ever win. It, it does seem like people are really locked into those two positions. And I would kind of plead with people to <laughs> to kind of consider the other side, maybe just a little bit, because, yeah. yeah, I feel personally, I do feel that you need both of those things. Well, hey, Jen, you know that I'm a big fan of your work. You know that Mo Senior is a big fan of your work. So I appreciate <laughs> your time tonight. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mo. Folks, she is a Vancouver-based journalist for the TAI, covering housing and city issues, with a focus on the downtown east side. For more with Jen, find This Is Van Color on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, because we're going to record some overtime to discuss the upcoming municipal elections across BC, specifically looking at what's happening in Vancouver. Now stick around, because after some business, the final report of the Cullen Commission has been released. Not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed. And I'm going to take a moment to tell you exactly why. My name is Mo Amir. This is Van Collins.